How was George Berkeley's occasionalism distinctive? Most occasionalists thought that the real causal connections between things took place in God's mind. Berkeley did not hold that view. According to Berkeley, we have ideas of sensory phenomena that are regularly followed by other specific ideas of sensory phenomena. But the idea of a causal link between them is an illusion. How was A. J. Era phenomenalist? According to Air, meaningful factual statements can be reduced to claims about sense data. While he seemed at times to temper this view. Over his career he stuck to sense data as the foundation of empirical knowledge. In a famous exchange with the ordinary language philosopher J. L. Austin. 1911-1960, Ayer defended his theory of sense data. Ayer's position was that sense data are not directly intuited until they have led to a perception of the ordinary world. With all of its normally perceptible objects, such as tables and chairs. Austin, who was a colleague of Ayers at Cambridge, held that Ayers' theory of sense data could not be a form of foundationism because it presupposed common sense reality. That is, Austin's claim against Ayer was that, contrary to how Ayer seemed to present his case, Perceptual knowledge was not built up of sense data. Ayer defended his view by claiming that in the process of verification sense data were necessary to confirm perceptions. What was Princess Elizabeth's philosophical influence on René Descartes? Descartes wrote Passions of Soul mainly to try to answer her questions about how the mind interacted with the body. In that book, Descartes discusses how emotions are the mind's perceptions of disturbances in our bodies. He thought that the will was part of the soul and immaterial but that there were very delicate fluids in the pineal gland that the will could influence. The result was that parts of the body could be controlled by the mind. In this passage, the possibility of the materiality of the soul is deftly introduced in a way that illuminates Descartes' dualism. No one, including Descartes, could satisfactorily explain how an immaterial soul could interact with a material body. One solution to this problem that Elizabeth intuited was to posit the soul as material. How is environmentalism related to feminism? Feminists have addressed the exploitation of natural environments as part of overall cultural misogyny insofar as the earth is at least metaphorically female. Also, some of the exploitation of animals is centered on female animals. Chris Cuomo explores this last thesis and characterizes living beings in an 
Interesting Way as Having Dynamic Charm in Feminism and Ecological Communities, 2002. What are some details of Sigmund Freud's life that led him to his work? Freud was born in Freiburg, Germany, but raised in Vienna, Austria. He studied medicine at the University of Vienna, specializing in neurology. In 1886, Freud married Martha Bernays. They had six children, and the youngest, Anna, herself became a noted psychoanalyst. Freud's youngest son, Ernst, was the father of Lucien Freud, the celebrated 20th century portrait painter. Biographers of Freud assess his family life as happy and stable. Providing much needed support for the controversy that swirled around his startling and original psychological theories. Freud's mentors J. M. Charcot and Joseph Brewer investigated hysteria, and Freud became interested in the psychological aspects of this disorder because hysterical patients have physical symptoms without underlying disease. Freud and Charcot published their clinical findings of how talk can change patients' ideas. As a treatment for hysteria, in their studies in hysteria, 1895. As Freud developed a sexual interpretation of the causes of hysteria, Brewer distanced himself from him. To whom is Berkeley's idealism perplexing? To those who continue to cleave to the reality of the perceived existence of an external world. Berkeley's idealism can be perplexing. It is also a problematic position for many scientists who must believe in an objective reality in order for their work concerning objective facts to make sense. In a nutshell, what did Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels write in their philosophy? Human beings must work to live. History, noted Marx and Engels, is a Hegelian dialectical process in which different divisions of labor have developed. Resulting in the 19th century in a bourgeois owning class that controls the government and an exploited proletariat, or working class, that furnishes the labor for capitalists. Capitalism is an economic system in which owners seek profits through ever-expanding production and markets. Their profit is the result of subtracting the costs of material and equipment. Or capital, plus wages paid to workers, from the money they take in. Within the producing system, labor, or the work of the working class results in a surplus value, because workers are exploited by employers. The worker is paid just enough to go home and eat, sleep, and engage in familial acts of reproduction, which altogether reproduce his labor so that he can continue to function as a worker. That is, every aspect of the worker's life is squeezed by their employers so that they can maximize their profits. The result is that workers, 
especially those who made up the vest. Pool of labor in 19th century industrial society, were poor. Philosophy says to Boethius, what is it, mortal man, that has cast you down into grief and mourning? You have seen something unwanted, it would seem, something strange to you. But if you think that fortune has changed towards you, you are wrong. These are ever her ways, this is her very nature. She has with you preserved her own constancy by her very change. She was ever changeable at the time when she smiled upon you. When she was mocking you with the allurements of false good fortune. You have discovered both the different faces of the blind goddess. That Boethius could have an angel appear to him is an occurrence with roots in Neoplatonist theurgy, or magic. And that the angel instills peace of mind in the face of turmoil and apparent misfortune evokes a decidedly stoic doctrine. Did Gottlob Frege succeed in reducing mathematics to logic? Alas, no. When the second volume to Freya's Basic Laws of Arithmetic 1893 had been sent to the printer, he received a letter from British philosopher, historian and mathematician Bertrand Russell, 1872-1970, in which Russell introduced his famous paradox. Is the class of all classes that are not members of itself a member of itself or not? The question is coherent but it entails a contradiction, so it has no answer. Freya had to admit that he had no foundation for his reasoning. A scientist can hardly encounter anything more undesirable than to have the foundation collapse just as the work is finished. I was put in this position by a letter from M.R. Bertrand Russell when the work was almost through the press. The great irony in this is that Russell embarked on his own project to reduce mathematics to logic and failed. What did Emile Durkheim contribute to the study of suicide? First of all, Durkheim defines suicide as follows. T. He term suicide is applied to all cases of death resulting directly or indirectly from a positive or negative act of the victim himself which he knows will produce this result. Second, he systematically catalogued suicide rates in modern society and analyzed his data into four main types. Egoistic, altruistic, anomic, and fatalistic. Egoistic suicide resulted from insufficient social ties. Altruistic from too much involvement in social relationships. Anomic suicide was the result of acute or chronic crises typical of conditions in contemporary life. Especially economic deprivation. Fatalistic suicide occurred only in exceptional conditions of difficult life circumstances. 
such as slavery. What is Daniel C. Dennett's philosophy of biology? Dennett, 1942, engages evolutionary theory by asking the question, skyhooks or cranes? Skyhooks are unexplained leaps from one stage of development to the next. Whereas cranes are ways of understanding a later stage based on the design of an earlier one. Dennett has argued that consciousness, the contents of consciousness, and even the products of consciousness, such as Shakespeare's plays, can be naturalistically understood in the same way that physical evolution is understandable. Neural systems create multiple drafts of the same thing so that the brain itself is a sort of dung heap in which the larvae of other people's ideas renew themselves. Dennett is also a proponent of the doctrine of memes, whereby certain patterns of behavior are products of evolution that are physically inherited. His extreme materialism has attracted many critics, as well as supporters. Who was Pierre Gassendi? Pierre Gassendi, 1592-1655, was a Catholic priest who was highly influential in justifying empirical science to religious dogmatists. He studied at Digny and Aix and became professor of rhetoric at Digny when he was 21. After he received his doctorate in theology at Avignon and was ordained a priest, he became professor of philosophy at Aix. He also pursued astronomical research. His Exercitations Paradoxici ad versus Aristoteleus, 1625, set out all that he thought was dubious and mistaken in Aristotle's writings. His principal attack on Aristotle was against the possibility of certain knowledge in science. Gassendi argued against Aristotle, 384-322 BCE, in his claim that certainty was neither possible nor necessary in science. At the same time, he sought to defend atomism against church doctrine. Gassendi developed what came to be known as a mitigated or moderate skepticism that supported the conclusions of scientific inquiry. Who was René Descartes? René Descartes, 1596-1650, inaugurated modern philosophy with a pair of questions that persist to this day. How are mind and matter different? And how is the mind connected to the body? He did not set out to invent these questions. But encountered them himself while on the way toward trying to do something else. He was trying to prove to the Catholic Church that rigorous philosophy was compatible with religion and that science could be both certain and compatible with religion.
Who was Hillary Putnam? Hillary Putnam's, 1926, extraordinarily productive career has encompassed metaphysics, epistemology, philosophy of mathematics, philosophy of mind, and philosophy of language. He began to flourish in the philosophical generation after W. V. Oquine, 1908-2000. Becoming a professor at Harvard in 1965, he collaborated with Quine on the ontology of mathematical entities and agreed with him about the analytic synthetic distinction. In collaboration with his wife, Ruth Anna Jacobs, he helped revive late 20th century interest in the work of John Dewey, 1859-1952. Putnam has also revived interest in William James, 1842-1910, work. Putnam's major publications include Mathematics, Matter, and Method, Philosophical Papers. Volume 1. 1975, 2nd ed. 1985, Mind, Language, and Reality, Philosophical Papers, Volume. 2, 1975, Meaning and the Moral Sciences, 1978, Reason, Truth, and History, 1981, Realism and Reason, Philosophical Papers, Volume 3, 1983, The Many Faces of Realism, 1987, Representation and Reality. 1988, Renewing Philosophy, 1992, and Pragmatism, An Open Question, 1995. How did Hilary Putnam agree with WVO? What are problems with functionalism as a theory of mind? Functionalism may result in attributing minds to complex systems that we otherwise would not consider to have minds. It might result in denying the presence of minds that operate according to different causal principles than our own. Indeed, Hilary Putnam, 1926, himself later rejected functionalism on the grounds that beliefs could not be computational states because their content was determined by external facts and beliefs were also part of a whole system of knowledge at the same time as Paul Kripke 1940 and Keith Donnellan 1931 he developed a new causal or direct theory of meaning, which was published in The Meaning of Meaning, 1975. What's the difference between the practice of philosophy and the subject of philosophy? Besides being an activity, philosophy is also a field of study. Like psychology, history, biology, or literature. When philosophy is studied as a subject, a lot of what's studied is the history of philosophy in the form of writings by past philosophers. At the beginning of the 21st century, Philosophy is mainly an academic discipline, which branches off into specializations and subfields. 
As a practice, the activities of academic philosophers consist of college teaching and the writing of scholarly texts which are contributions and additions to the field of philosophy as a body of knowledge that can be studied. What is the problem caused by intersectionality? The result of all the intersectionalities has been a widely accepted equation that race plus class equals gender. Resulting in a multiplicity of women's genders that prevents. The possibility of women working together or even identifying in the same way. And the result of that is an unspecified number of feminisms. Once different women's genders are recognized. It can be very difficult for them to reunite as women. For example in their essay Have We Got a Theory for You? 1998 Maria C. Lagones and Elizabeth V. Spellman use a dialogue to show how some differences in Angla and Latina cultural experience simply cannot be translated into each other's framework of understanding. What are some of Peter Singer's views? Singer, 1946, has at times argued that the lives of healthy adult animals are of greater value than those of severely impaired human infants. Such views have met with great controversy. When Singer was hired by Princeton University in 1999, there were dramatic public demonstrations by and for disabled people. And the university administration hired armed guards to protect him. Singer, proceeding on utilitarian grounds, does not believe that animals have rights. But rather that their well-being is intrinsically good and their pain and destruction intrinsically bad. Singer is not a deep ecologist, because he does not attribute intrinsic value to the well-being of mountains, rivers, or plants, or whatever is not sentient. Singer has claimed that the privileging of human life and well-being over that of animals is speciesism. Which, in principle, is no different from racism and sexism. Was Immanuel Kant only interested in the foundations for knowledge of the physical world? No. In addition to what Kant held to be man's universal off or the starry heavens above. He addressed the moral law within as a subject of practical reason. He also had lasting things to say about the self and belief in God. Who was Mary Wollstonecraft? Mary Wollstonecraft, 1759-1797, is considered the founder of modern feminism in the West. She wrote at the time of the French Revolution and contributed to democratic ideas, generally, in vindication of the rights of men. 
as well as to arguments for the equality of women in vindication of the rights of women. She also wrote novels, an autobiographical travel essay, and shorter works on education. What was the Quine Putnam theory of mathematics? Called by professional philosophers the indispensability argument for mathematical realism. It basically asserted the existence of mathematical entities. W. V. O. Quine, 1908 to 2000, and Hilary Putnam, 1926, argued that we have to commit to the existence of or have ontological commitments to things that are indispensable for the best science. Mathematical entities qualify as indispensable. Therefore, we must commit to their existence. Which early American philosophical strains were most influential? The thought of several Native American orators, the St. Louis Hegelians, the transcendentalists of New England, and writers on evolution all influenced pragmatist philosophy, either directly or by their emphasis of what were to become enduring American themes to be taken up by pragmatists and others. Is philosophy only found in the West? No. As individual intellectual tendencies and cultural traditions. Philosophy has been present in all human societies since the beginning of recorded history and probably farther back than that. In the United States and Europe, philosophy, as an intellectual profession practiced by academics, developed as an official part of the higher education curriculum during the 20th century. But many societies, particularly those that are still peopled by the original or indigenous inhabitants of a place, have maintained their philosophies through oral traditions. Oral traditions in African philosophy and Native American philosophy often deal with questions about time, space, origins, and ethics. There are also well-developed textual traditions, going back at least as far as Socrates. In Indian philosophy, Japanese philosophy, and Chinese philosophy, collectively called Asian philosophy or Eastern philosophy. These systems of thought are increasingly part of standard philosophy curricula in the United States. As are comparative philosophy, African American philosophy, and Latin American philosophy. Who was Jonathan Edwards? Jonathan Edwards, 1703-1758, was the third president of Princeton University. Although he died a year after he was elected, The Book of Sentences is structured around important theological questions and subjects. 
for example, is God the cause of evil and sin? Peter first set out the question or issue, related what the position of the church fathers on it would have been. And then proposed his own answer or resolution. How did environmental philosophy get started? Popular environmentalism began in the 1960s and 1970s when marine biologist Rachel Carson 1907-1964, traced the movement of toxic pesticides, specifically DDT, through the food chain in her classic book, Silent Spring, 1962. Intellectually, this led to a rediscovery of ecologist and forester Aldo Leopold's, 1887-1948, land ethic. A Sand County Almanac, 1949, and the thought of John Muir, 1838-1914, founder of the Sierra Club. Leopold had written, that land is a community is the basic concept of ecology but that land is to be loved and respected is an extension of ethics. This moral tone set the basic philosophical orientation toward environmentalism as a moral-slash-ethical matter. The Norwegian philosopher Arne Nys, 1912, was inspired by his encounter with the Himalayan. Sherpa's reverence for their great mountains when his guides would not take him to sacred places. Nice developed an important distinction between deep ecology and shallow ecology. What were Leo Strauss' main politically relevant ideas? Strauss 1899-1973, was mainly a classical political theorist. He believed that an important connection between real-life politics and philosophy began with Socrates, 460-399b. CE, Trial and Conviction. He argued that, since Socrates Philosophers had hidden their meanings to escape political persecution. Strauss developed a theory of reading as a way for independent thinkers to uncover the true intentions behind necessarily obscure texts. Strauss did not believe that the social science distinction between facts and values was fundamental. This distinction held that statements about what should be the case cannot be logically deduced from statements about what is the case. He held that politics could not be studied without prior values. Strauss thought that human excellence and political virtue had been neglected. As a result of the importance placed on individual freedom in modern liberalism, because liberalism as a doctrine led to relativism, it could be subject to two kinds of nihilism, a brutal nihilism. As in Nazi Germany or Communist Russia, which erased existing foundations of society to enshrine new ideals. Or a gentle nihilism that led to permissive egalitarianism, as in American culture. Strauss apparently endorsed noble lies as a political means for correcting contemporary abuses. According to new political philosophy based on the esoteric readings of classical texts, 
A noble lie is a lie told to people who will benefit from believing it. However, he himself had no clear solutions to tensions between reason and religion. Or modern versus ancient political philosophy. How have second wave feminists addressed gender? They have criticized the social norm of compulsive heterosexuality. On the grounds that the human sex gender system is a system of power that benefits men at the expense of women. Some of this work has consisted of the deconstruction of gender as natural and a valorization of love between women. Judith Butler the professor of rhetoric and comparative literature at the University of California at Berkeley, has challenged heteronormativity in Antigone's claim, kinship between life and death. 2000, and Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity, 1999. Butler is famous for her deconstruction of gender into performances of gender. Sarah Lucia Hoagland, in Lesbian Ethics, Toward a New Value, 1988, and Marilyn Fry in The Politics of Reality. Essays in Feminist Theory, 1983, developed foundational views of this perspective. Who was Johann Gottlieb Fichte? Johann Gottlieb Fichte, 1762-1814, is regarded as an intellectual bridge between Immanuel Kant, 1724-1804, and Friedrich Hegel, 1770-1831, as well as the founder of the 19th century school of German idealism. What is GRU? Nelson Goodman, 1906-1998, supposed that all emeralds before time t, which is the present, are green. But if this is true, then G is also true. Emeralds before time T are green or emeralds after time T are blue. The reason it is true that emeralds after time T are either green or blue is that the time after. Time T is the future and we do not know what the future will hold for emeralds or for anything else. G defines the predicate grew, a term Goodman made up, as a quality of emeralds. All of the emeralds that qualify as grew could be blue after time t. Nevertheless, Goodman maintained that we would prefer to call them blue after time t. He believed this showed that confirmation cannot be a purely logical or syntactic process. But that it reflects our linguistic preferences, which go beyond what we actually know. What is Roman Stoicism? Roman Stoicism was developed by Seneca the Younger, 1 to 65 c. E. Epictetus, c. 55 to 135 CE, and the Emperor Marcus Aurelius, 121 to 80 CE who wrote Meditations.
many were moved by Marcus Aurelius' advice about restraining anger at his weak subjects. Do not be turned into Caesar, or died by the purple, for that happens. Roman Stoicism was influential in the Renaissance and the modern period. And to this day it underlies codes of behavior and moral values in military communities. The basic Stoic premise is that we are obligated to understand the nature of the things we deal with and be prepared to accept. Without fuss, unwanted events that are not under our control. Epictetus is famous for saying that if your favorite clay pot breaks, you should remember that it was always fragile and not yours to begin with. And if your spouse or child dies, that is a reminder that they are mortals. Something that we should always remember about the human beings we love. Was Christianity the only religious influence on philosophy after the ancient period? No. Although, Christianity formed the dominant worldview in Europe for over a thousand years. Jewish and Muslim thought also flourished. What was Paul Fire Ben's view of science? He did not think it was possible to construct a philosophy of science that set out invariable rules for scientific progress. Instead, he argued that the most important scientific revolutions proceeded in violation of standing accepted methodological rules. He believed, for example, that the consistency criterion, which posits that new theories not contradict older ones, is not a rational rule but an aesthetic one, insofar as old theories have been falsified. Feyerabend also argued against Karl Popper's 1902-1994 Idea of falsification on the grounds that interesting theories are not constructed in accordance with all relevant facts. One example of this was how the Renaissance astronomer Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642 and his followers disregarded some of their telescopic observations during the construction of their optical theory. Feyerabend claimed that Lakato's notion of a research program was a form of his own anarchism in disguise. He dedicated against method. Outline of an anarchistic theory of knowledge, 1975, to Lakato's as his fellow anarchist. Who was W? V. O. Quine? W. V. O. Willard Van Orman, Quine, 1908-2000, represents the apogee of 20th century scientific philosophy. In many ways he combined the best of logical positivism, pragmatism, and scientific empiricism. He was born in Akron, Ohio, and studied at Oberlin College and then Harvard. He earned his Ph.D. in 1932 and then became a Harvard Fellow. 
This allowed four years for research and travel before beginning his 50-year Harvard teaching career in 1936 his influence is considered monumental, and he has been highly regarded, even revered, as a person. Quine's main books are Word and Object, 1964, The Ways of Paradox, and other essays. 1976, Ontological Relativity, 1977, From a Logical Point of View, Nine Logico-Philosophical Essays. 1980, From Stimulus to Science, 1998, Theories and Things, 1986. Pursuit of Truth, 1992, and Quidithes, An Intermittently Philosophical Dictionary, 1989. What was the Bloomsbury Group? He Bloomsbury Group was a loose group of friends, the men of which were Cambridge graduates. They met in the evenings for drink and talk at the house of author Virginia Woolf's sister, Vanessa Bell. The house was in the Bloomsbury district of London, and hence this name. Its initial members, before 1910, were, the novelists E. M. Forster, Mary McCarthy, and Virginia Woolf, economist John Maynard Keynes, the novelist, biographer, and critic Lytton Strachey, and the painters Duncan Grant, Vanessa Bell, and Roger Fry. All were close or intimate friends long before they individually became famous. G. E. Moore 1873-1958, served as an intellectual ideal and mentor to the group. He was particularly revered by the others for his Principia Ethica. 1903, and the model of clarity he provided for all intellectual work. Above all, the Bloomsbury members were inspired by Moore's idea that art and friendship have intrinsic value they re good in themselves and serve no higher purpose. How did Arthur Schopenhauer think we could best become aware of noumenal will? Through aesthetic experience, especially of nature and music, we can become aware of the noumenal world. Schopenhauer's theory of nature appreciation is a modification of Immanuel Kant's. 1724104, Notion of the Sublime Schopenhauer thought that there is tranquility in the experience of the beautiful. But that the experience of the sublime, such as in watching a storm, requires an active participation. Thus, the observer tears himself away from his own will. In contemplating the sublime object by a free exaltation. Music is a pure expression of the absolute noumenal will. In listening to music, which expresses the universal will. We directly become universal subjects, bypassing our own individual wills. What was Hilary Putnam's neo-pragmatism? In the 1970s he began to regret the lack of historical knowledge in analytic philosophy. 
he applied Ludwig Wittgenstein's, 1889-1951. Notion of ordinary language to advocate for pluralism within philosophy. He lost confidence in the ability of philosophers to Describe the world better than ordinary language users. Given his increased interest in the social sciences, particularly economics, he rejected the fact-slash-value dichotomy. Putnam argued that scientists were not as objective or free of value concerns as they presented themselves to be. And that value judgments can be objective. What was John Stuart Mill's final assessment of religious belief? Mill concluded that, given the evils of this world, it is impossible that there is a God who is both all-powerful and loves humankind. He did think, though, that it was likely that there exists a less than omnipotent but nonetheless benevolent deity. Overall, Mill believed that human beings can control their happiness on earth through improvements in education and social institutions. Still, he saw the utility of religion for some who modeled their own morality based on Jesus Christ's teachings. Did philosophy lead to the other sciences all at once? No, until the end of the 17th century, the physical sciences were called natural philosophy. Until the 19th century, there were no social sciences and their work was done in philosophy. Who was Albertus Magnus? Albertus Magnus, 1200-1280 Was a German-Dominican theologian who was also a dedicated scholar of philosophy. As Master of Theology at the University of Paris, he was a member of the commission that condemned the Jewish holy book, the Talmud. His philosophical contributions consisted mainly of Aristotelian commentaries. And where Aristotle disagreed with Catholic doctrine, Magnus corrected him and substitute different accounts. He relied on astrology in his view of the physical world, believing. For instance, that when the influence of Jupiter and Saturn increased the result was great fire. Whereas when this influence decreased, there would be floods. How did Hobbes explain sensation, memory, imagination, thought, and emotion? Hobbes described sensations as effects of movement in the body that are felt through the motions of the heart. Sense always has some memory adhering to it. Because sense organs retain the movements of external bodies acting on them. So long as the organs are moved by one object, 
they cannot be moved by another. Imagination is decaying sense, after the source of sensation is removed. And memory is similar to imagination, except that it also has a feeling of familiarity. Hobbes believed that thought involved literal movements in the head. His idea of unguided thought led to later theories of the association of ideas. That one thought automatically evokes another in the mind. Guided thought is goal-directed. Hobbes thought that while humans and animals both may perform the action that is necessary to reach a goal. Only humans have the distinctive trait of prudence. Prudence involves beginning with the action that one can perform. And then calculating its consequences as a guide for what to do. Prudence increases with experience. Concerning the passions, or emotions, which he called endeavors. Hobbes postulated two types of motion in the body, vital motions, such as breathing, nutrition, and the circulation of the blood, and animal motion, such as voluntary movement. Pleasure is nothing more than motion around the heart. Appetite is an endeavor toward an object associated with pleasure. And aversion is an endeavor away from it. Kant's motivating metaphysical question was How is it possible to know certain principles about the world, without prior experience? Kant's solution was to apply a transcendental deduction to such principles and show that without them experience would not be possible. For example, concerning causation, he argued that consciousness itself requires orderly experience based on necessary connections in reality. This was Kant's answer to David Hume's, 1711-1776, reduction of causation to constant conjunction. He rejected Hume's skepticism that constant conjunction is all that there is by claiming that the world could only make sense to us if we assumed that that there were real causal connections in it. In his Prolegomena to Every Future Metaphysics, 1783 Kant famously said that Hume had awakened him from his dogmatic slumbers. Who was G? E. Moore George Edward Moore, 1873-1958, successfully revived epistemological and metaphysical realism and supported a common-sense philosophical method. He spent most of his career at Cambridge University, becoming a professor there in 1925. As an undergraduate, Moore was a member of the Cambridge Apostles, a select intellectual group of Cambridge University undergraduates. He was editor of the top analytic journal, Mind, 1921-1947. Moore's main books are Philosophical Studies, 1922, Principia Ethica. 1903, and Some Main Problems of Philosophy, 1953. What was G.E.?
What is French feminism? French feminism is a school of thought named by feminists outside France to refer to work mainly proffered by Luce Iragaray. 1932, Helen Sixus, 1937, and Julia Kristeva, 1941. But none of these three is originally from France. And from time to time each has denied being a feminist. What Ira Gary, Sixus, and Chris Tava all share is that their work is based on considerations of philosophical and psychoanalytic texts. They all assume that to improve the situation of women, fundamental psychological structures need to be revised. That is, they are working within the tradition of structuralism. By comparison, there is another group of French feminists whose work is more sociological and activist than theoretical. Known as French materialist feminists, they address the situation of women by attempting to change society through political activism and work in the social sciences. Key figures are Simon de Beauvoir, 1908-1986, Christine Delphi, 1941, Monique Wittig, 1935-2003, and Colette Guillaume, 1934. Some of their theoretical work, which has been especially influential in the Communist Revolutionary League, Describes the ways in which the free labor of women in the family supports capitalism. How did William James come to develop pragmatism? During the 1870s, James participated in a discussion group that became known as the Metaphysical Club. Its members included Charles Sanders Pierce, 1839-1914, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, 1841-1935, and mathematician and philosopher Chauncey Wright, 1830-1875. While the group was meeting, there was some concern on the part of civic leaders in New England that religion, particularly Protestantism, was suffering as a result of the popularity of Darwinism and intense interest in the sciences. At the time James began to teach philosophy. Harvard administrators had an interest in the potential of philosophy to support religion. When James began his career, the disciplinary boundaries between psychology and philosophy were fluid. Largely as the result of his work, the two fields were distinct by the end of his career. To this day, William James Hall houses the Harvard Department of Psychology. Who was William James? William James, 1842-1910, built on Charles Pierce's, 1839-1914. Pragmatist ideas to create a more humanistic form of pragmatism. James was also the founder of modern psychology as a science independent of subjective introspection. His principal works include The Principles of Psychology, 1890, 
The Will to Believe and Other Essays in Popular Philosophy. 1897, The Varieties of Religious Experience, 1901-1902, and Pragmatism, 1907. Ideas of technology go back to Plato, c. 428 c. 348 BCE, and Aristotle, 384 to 322 BCE, who spoke of techni. Or knowledge of art and craft, which included arithmetic and medicine. Such knowledge understands itself according to universals and causes. It can be taught and is distinct from physis, or nature. Contemporary philosophy of technology is a multidisciplinary field dedicated to studying the cultural effects and causes of technology. Both historically and in its emergent forms. The American Philosophical Association publishes a newsletter on philosophy and computers, and there are academic journals such as Ends and Means. Net Future Technology and Human Responsibility, and Techni, Research in Philosophy and Technology. What did Augustine confess in Confessions? The importance of Augustine's, 354-430, confessions lies less in what he disclosed about himself and more in its intimate, first-person style of writing, which became a distinct genre in future religious works, as well as philosophical treatises. His confessions, written when he was in his forties, relates his religious yearnings, strivings, and happiness. Augustine's early education was in rhetoric and literature. He claims that when, at the age of 18, he read Cicero's now lost dialogue. Hortensius, he was inspired to devote his life to the search for wisdom. Although he converted to Christianity in 386, he made a living teaching rhetoric. And for a while his main religious interest was in Manichaeanism. Manichaeanism denied the crucifixion of Jesus, united Christianity with Buddhism, and was preoccupied with struggles between good and evil, or light and darkness. Augustine came into contact with Bishop Ambrose and Christian Neoplatonists in Milan and found a sufficiently sophisticated form of Christianity that appealed to him. Augustine believed that Neoplatonism anticipated the basic Christian doctrines about God, the creation, and divine presence. When he returned to his home in North Africa, he was ordained as a priest and then became Bishop of Hippo. He preached, traveled, and corresponded voluminously. In his scholarly and devotional activities, he came to believe that the Christian scriptures, particularly the Gospel account of the life of Jesus, were more important than the writings of philosophers. He concluded that more important than belief, which was an intellectual matter, was understanding, which began with faith, believe in order that you may understand. 
understanding required a vision of God. What was unusual about Vico's autobiography? Vico told the story of his life, Life of Gyambadista Vico written by himself. 1725-1728, in the third person, and he analyzed both the effect of his circumstances on his temperament and how his ideas developed before he began writing. His autobiography is thus his intellectual history. Here is how it begins, Signor Gyambatis de Vico. He was born in Naples in the year 1670 of upright parents, who left behind them a very good reputation. The father was of cheerful humor, the mother of a quite melancholy temper. And both came together in the fair disposition of this little son of theirs. As a boy he was very lively and restless, but at the age of seven he fell headfirst from high on a ladder to the floor. And remained a good five hours motionless and senseless. Fracturing the right side of the cranium without breaking the skin, hence from the fracture arose a shapeless tumor. And from the many deep lancings of it the child lost a great deal of blood. Such that the surgeon, having observed the broken cranium and considering the long state of unconsciousness, made the prediction that he would either die of it or he would survive stolid. However, neither of the two parts of this judgment, by the grace of God, came true. But as a result of this illness and recovery he grew up, from then on, with a melancholy and acrid nature which necessarily belongs to ingenious and profound men. Who through ingenuity flash like lightning in acuity, through reflection take no pleasure in witticism and falsity. Do philosophers from the different subfields cooperate and get along? After postmodernism, many philosophical subfields split within themselves when interest in continental philosophy. From France and Germany, introduced existentialism, phenomenology, and deconstruction to the field. Academic philosophers became embattled in their own culture wars. Empiricist or mainstream philosophers defended both their traditional methods and established canon. Against approaches that were more centered on human existence and experience and cultural criticism. What were Isaiah Berlin's two concepts of liberty? Berlin developed the distinction in his 1958 inaugural address as Sheik Heel Professor of Social and Political Theory at Oxford University. Negative liberty is the absence of constraints or interference with individual action. As in a person being free to vote, write a book, or study ballroom dancing. Positive liberty is the human capacity for self-development and determination of one's destiny. For example, some people live in countries without negative liberties. Which in turn hampers their positive liberty. Others with positive liberties may not be able to fully 
exercise them due to economic or social limitations. Berlin argued that, largely due to the Romantic and German idealist tradition. Political theorists had been preoccupied with positive liberties as effects of particular forms of government. He believed that the idea of positive liberty was co-opted by both German National Socialism and Communism. In the case of Communism, the goal of liberty became identical to the goal of state control in the name of collective rationality. For the Nazis, it was the destiny of Germany and its master. Race that became an overriding value affecting individual lives. Berlin was an advocate of negative liberty in the tradition of John Stuart Mill. 1806-1873, which emphasized the importance of minimal government constraint. In other words, he did not think government was a viable source of values or projects for individual life. Plans because when government did assume that function it was likely to become totalitarian and repressive. What aspects of Dostoevsky's life influenced his deep interest in human difficulty? Dostoevsky's father was a violent and abusive alcoholic. He was also the doctor of the Mariinsky Hospital for the Poor in Moscow. Dostoevsky himself suffered from epilepsy from the age of nine. As a child, he used to disobey his parents and explore Mariinsky Hospital. Absorbed by the misery of the patients and the stories about their lives that they told him. His first book, Poor Folk, 1846, brought out the individual humanity of the poor. Who were otherwise be ignored and dismissed by the educated reading public of the time. In 1849, Dostoevsky was arrested for his participation in the liberal group of intellectuals called the Petrashevsky Circle. He was sentenced to death. Although Tsar Nicholas II did not really intend for the execution to be carried out. Nevertheless, the experience of standing for hours in the freezing cold in anticipation of a firing squad was believed to have scared Dostoevsky for life. He was then exiled to Siberia for four years of hard labor. He wrote of this period, in summer, in tolerable closeness, in winter. Unendurable cold. All the floors were rotten. Filth on the floors an inch thick. One could slip and fall. We were packed like herrings in a barrel. Fleas, lice, and black beetles by the bushel. When Dostoevsky's brother and wife died in the same year, he fell into a deep depression and became a gambler. During that period he wrote Crime and Punishment, 1866, in a frenzied haste, because he was out of money. His life evened out after 1867, when he married his 20-year-old stenographer to whom he had dictated The Gambler, 1867. While this book is about an elderly woman who gambles self-destructively, some think that Dostoevsky was describing his own compulsion. Dostoevsky lived at the Russian resort Storea for years before his death. 
from emphysema and an epileptic seizure that brought on a lung hemorrhage. 40,000 people went to his funeral. What was the nature of Nietzsche's disability? Much controversy swirls around this question. There is evidence that he was treated for syphilis at Leipzig, while being kept ignorant of the diagnosis. He is believed to have had tertiary syphilis when he died. It is not clear when Nietzsche might have caught this disease, since he lived an ascetic life. But it was perhaps the result of visiting a brothel only once or twice while he was a student. Nietzsche's health was poor throughout his life. His eyesight was weak and he had gastrointestinal pains that he treated himself by walking and by taking a plethora of pills. In January 1889, Nietzsche broke down in a street in Turin, his arms around a horse that had been beaten. Over the next few days, he wrote demented letters to his friends. Claiming to have been crucified by German doctors in a very drawn-out manner and ordering the Emperor of Germany to report to Rome so that he could be shot. His friends brought him back from Italy, and his mother put him in a clinic in Jena. The treatment was unsuccessful, though, and his mother brought him home. In 1893, his sister, Elizabeth, returned from Paraguay, where her husband had committed suicide. She took charge of the editing and publication of Nietzsche's manuscripts and isolated him from his friends. When their mother died in 1897, Elizabeth brought Nietzsche to Weimar, where she allowed people to see him. Nietzsche was not communicative, but she had him dressed up anyway. So that she could display him. He was by then very famous. In 